Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to uh, another edition of uh, the Access of Trader.com. A uh, nightly wrap-up show. Hope everybody is uh, doing well. Hope everybody had a great weekend. Hope everybody had uh, a good uh, trading day. If you are uh, brand new to the channel, guys, again, we always want to uh, encourage new viewers, uh, like, share. That's the only thing we ask for. Like, if you like the content, give us a like, support the channel, and I'll try to do my best every single day to try to put you in the right frame of mind that you can capitalize on the next trading day, or at least formulate an opinion that correlates to the price actions. Hopefully, everybody is doing well. And if you are brand new, uh, come aboard uh, for the ride. So let's talk about it. a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on here. Um, number one, you have uh, this evening. You have Trump doing uh, kind of a State of the Union address in the country. On Twitter, X, I think Elon Musk is going to be interviewing him. I think something like that to the point, but he is definitely going to be uh, addressing the country today. He had reports on uh, midday that um, Iran is you know, pretty much going to strike uh, Israel at some point. You can see the price action somewhere around lunchtime. You can see the price action is really fall off a clip very, very quickly. Uh, you got big... Uh, data, right? You got economic data coming out. Tomorrow is the PPI. Wednesday is the CPI. You have more Ukraine news. And oh, by the way, we still have a full trading day just trying to figure out what's what. So let's talk about what's what. If you guys remember uh, last week, another uh, red week for the indexes. But guys, when we talked about uh, there was a good news, silver lining, and all this, a lot of bad news was, was being kind of engulfed embraced. And as of Friday's session, we tested the 10 day moving average with four out of the five days of higher closes than opens, which was bullish while shaking off bad news. And while we talked about uh, in the video uh, on the weekend video, it's not a sign that that was the bottom. And if it is the bottom, God bless, who cares? But it's just more of a sign is that at least we are going into today's session with a potential of an extension of a tradable bounce, at least uh, off the bottom. Uh, and if you watched the video over the weekend, we talked about the importance of the 10-day moving average. And that's exactly what happened today. You saw the Qs reclaim back the 10-day moving average. We talked about that 452 level. Uh, nice move. Nice move intraday uh, into that 254 and change level before uh, the Iran news kind of hit the tape. So big move there. But in, again, here's one of those, you know, here's one of these markets that you could find speckles of good setups, at least to give you cash flow in the midst of stocks that are way below uh, supply. We'll get to, uh, you know, we'll get to the pivots uh, in a second. So pretty decent pivots. But again, the same mannerism that you had from all of last week kind of played out again today. Not everything went up. Right, you know, at one point the Nasdaq was up like a hundred and change. Not everything went up. Again, if you look at uh, if you look at uh, some of the names, uh, you see you know some decent moves. Uh, you know, up a little bit, down a little bit, but it wasn't a uniformed march uh, like we see a uniform march when we're above the fifty day moving average. I I think I think based on what we're seeing just on today. It does feel like the market is getting a little bit tired off this five-day bounce. Can I see one more day potentially getting back to this 250, 456 level on the Qs? I could see that. The only reason why is just this is where it broke down. If you see uh, where it broke down was the 730 lows, right? The 730 lows, this whole area here. So I could see one more push getting back to that level uh, before potentially getting denied. But it does feel like a lot of the names, even though they are balancing off the lows, it does feel very heavy, right? And until and again, until we start reclaiming bigger levels, the 20-day, the 65-day, and especially the 50-day moving average, this has to again be deemed a bounce uh, more than anything real. That again, doesn't mean you can't take advantage. And if you look at today's pivots again, here is another perfect example. You don't need 200 trades, right? You don't need a thousand different setups. You're not going to get them. Okay, there was only 
X amount of names that were above the previous day's channel, but the names that were above the previous day's channel gave a pretty good move. And again, we had some pretty good value uh, in the morning. And then once that Iran is Israel news kind of hit uh, in mid morning towards lunchtime, the market just kind of literally just went to sleep. Again, here's the point. Uh, AMD, nice pop. You know, again, you're not going to get a ten dollar move anywhere. Okay, forget about that. You're not going to get a ten dollar move when stocks are in supply, but you are going to get these dollar, two dollar moves that are pretty good. We can get pretty good cash flow going for the next supply zone, which is again, that's the whole overall theme. Uh, AMD this morning, one thirty six fifty needs to build again. Not a huge move, but it, it gave a nice pop, right? 136.50 finally got out above this channel, traded up to 138. It still looks good. If we could get one more day, right? If we could get one more day of rallying, at least tomorrow morning, perhaps it could trade back to the 8.5 highs. And if we can engulf this whole candle here and get above it, who knows? Maybe we could get a nice little pop here, but again, nice pop, you know, nice pop on AMD, nothing crazy. Uh, NVIDIA was definitely the biggest trade uh, of the day, at least mine. Um, 107 and 109 big areas to confirm. You now, like we talked about, I, I, I thought there was a, a high probability for those 111, uh, for a potential 111 move just because they were coming for the 110, uh, 112 weekly. So we got our move, man. We got our move. Here was the, here was the 107 reclaim back the 10 day moving average. We talked about it on the weekend video, right? That was the theme. If stocks can reclaim back the 10 day. You can get a move, right? So today, you know, the video took back the 10 day. Uh, got above 107, got above 109, and gave us a perfect move right to the 20-day supply of 111. Beautiful. You couldn't really ask for uh, anything more. Uh, S-O-U-N, small cap name. Guys, you should really watch this thing. Um, you know, it is a lot of weird call buying coming into the stock. Granted, it's for leaps. There's a lot of money being exchanged in this S-O-U-N. you got to keep an eye on this thing. Um, Microsoft never confirmed. Meta never confirmed. Tesla never confirmed. I did lose 60 cents on Tesla. I tried to short it on the opening range. Didn't wasn't really cracking, so I ended up losing 60 cents there. But nothing, uh, nothing. Again, the whole the whole point is lose pennies to make dollars. Uh, Apple had a really nice move, right? Apple had a here. Here's the 195 that I shorted. It only went out like 30, 40 cents, and then crack and we moved back up. So uh, Apple, Apple again, another a perfect example of getting above the previous day's supply and nice move. You know, two sixteen eighty. Uh, needs to build on Apple, and like I said, I think I think the stock could get to 1930s, which is the next supply. Da 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 da, magic, right? Got above the 20 day and trended right to the 1930s, which was the next supply. Beautiful move. I get absolutely nothing wrong. So you had AMD, you had uh, Nvidia, you had uh, Apple, and uh, one nice, really nice move from the smaller cap space. Uh, LUMN, right? And again, here's a perfect example, guys. And you know, people think that you have to trade mega cap technology to trade the PS60 theory. A, a chart is a chart, a pattern is a pattern. It's gonna, it doesn't make a difference if you're trading a $4 stock, a $4,000 stock. If a stock has a range and has volume, right, and has supply and demand zones, well, you can trade it. That's the whole point. So here was uh, LUMN, uh, you, you know, big high flyer in the last couple of months. Uh, 480, if it builds below, can flush. Again, it didn't flush yet, but a nice little move nevertheless. Here was LUMN. It got below the 480, traded down, uh, traded all the way down to 455. It does look like it has a, a magnet to this 420 levels. For you guys, it was still short. Nice move. Again, you got a 20, 25 cent move on a $4 stock. Again, there's nothing uh, wrong there. You know, going into tomorrow, again, like, I, like I've like i said uh, a few minutes ago, a lot of names look tired. They do. A lot of names look tired off this balance, but I'm hopeful, right? I'm actually hopeful that we do get one more day so at least the Qs could push into that 456 level. Because if these stocks don't, they start gassing out in the middle of this balance, then yes, some point in the middle of the week, towards the bottom half of the week, we are going to start seeing uh, bottom channels tested. And that's a very, very uh, important part. So let's keep an eye on Microsoft for tomorrow. Kind of the same setup as NVIDIA. You see how Microsoft stopped at the green line the same way NVIDIA stopped at the green line on Friday. Let's watch Microsoft tomorrow. If we could get back above the 10-day, maybe gives us a pop. Uh, let's definitely watch AMD again. AMD, all it needs to do is get back uh, above last week's highs for a potential stretch. Uh, that looks interesting. Uh, also, let's keep an eye on... Let me see what else I want to give you guys. Let's also keep an eye on... Let me see what else I want to give you guys. Oh, look at this Cava. Not really, you know, not really my cup of tea, but Cava had a big move here. 
above the 50 day moving average. Put an inside day today, basically is a res day. Watch this cab in the next couple of days. Um, if this thing could get back above Friday's channel, this thing could wake up. Keep an eye on that as well. And yeah, look, look at Tesla. Tesla did not participate today. Uh, I'm still watching this thing for a potential two-sided trade. I, I know it's just going sideways, but as we know with Tesla or, or any mega cap name, the longer it goes sideways, the higher probability the trade will spark something very aggressively. The question is which side, right? We don't know here. You can see there's top heavy supply here, uh, to top heavy supply here uh, all around here. But at the same time, it's holding this bottom channel here. Something has to go here. In the next couple of days, guys, you're going to see Tesla expand this channel. The question is which way? The most important part is for me, I'm not going to guess. I'm not going to anticipate. I'm not going to forecast. I'm going to let the market dictate to us exactly what happens next. So tonight, you got the Trump, um, I guess, addressing the nation via X. Tomorrow, you got PPI. You got CPI on uh, Wednesday. Hopefully, there won't be any type of attack or any type of war. Again, who the hell wants to see uh, people die? Again, just a crazy world we live in. Uh, but that's always on the table. So the most important part, guys, just be a good human being. Before trying to be a good trader and the best trader in the world and the smartest guy in the world, the smartest woman in the world, just be the best person you can can and then everything else will fall in line. Guys, God bless everybody. Stay true to yourself. Stay in your lane. Be comfortable. Put a smile on your face. And life is much easier to live that way. Guys, God bless everybody. I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.